Well, it is my pleasure now to introduce you to the essence of my human caring theory. And it starts with self. So I often use this singing bowl as a model and a metaphor for this work in our world, which is related to the heart of our profession and the heart of our humanity. And I use this bowl intentionally because it's calibrated to the vibrations of the human heart. And when you step into this theory, we get to bring the fullness of our compassion and our caring, our love, and our service to humanity through our heart, as well as our head and our hands. So this is an opportunity for you to come with me on this journey of my theory and to take a moment to pause and to stop and breathe gently into your own heart center and let yourself quiet the mind so you can be open to the theory as I'm going to provide an overview at this time. So I hope you have paused with me to enter a space where you can listen and be attentive to learn about the theory that you are already practicing, but you probably are not aware of it. The essence of this theory really begins with the foundation of our noble and ancient profession from Nightingale forward. She was very clear that nursing is a professional calling. You're not here listening to this by accident because you're here in service to humanity at a level that you're not fully aware of when you're only tied up with tasks and skills in an institutional setting. But really you're here because you have a purpose and meaning to offer compassionate human service and human caring and healing and health and wholeness, which allows us to sustain our humanity, to preserve human, human integrity, and to sustain our humanity all through the system for ourselves as well as others. The essence of this theory not only is grounded in Nightingale and our history and traditions, but it is also grounded in a deep moral and ethical foundation of offering compassionate service as a covenant with our humanity. So this view, world view is one of being in relation with other people rather than being separate from others. But the theory actually lives in your own experience. The theory lives through your caring moments that you have all experienced with each other, with patients, with families, but you often may not have had the language to give voice and informed action to what you've experienced. So the theory has actually provided you these 10 Caritas processes, which I will go over shortly as part of the continuation of this series. But for now, I want you to understand the very philosophical, ethical foundation of our profession that we offer with these values to serve our public. And also to give voice and language to our own practices and to understand that the theory is lived out in these caring moments that you personally have experienced, but you can take it from an ad hoc moment that you may have had and make it into a much more intentional, professional, informed, conscious practice, giving voice and language and documentation and action toward this. But the other part of the theory is understanding that those caring moments are informed by you, you and your personal self, you and your heart-centered awareness, you and your loving kindness, your energetic presence, your intentionality, your ability to prepare yourself to go into that moment with another human being and be present. This transcends any task or skills, and it transcends any diagnosis or treatment or setting or even age group, because this theory applies to our humanity. 
It's about how do we sustain human caring and healing and health and helps us to see our phenomena in a different way. My definition of theory is the Latin word theoria, which literally, literally means to see. How can you be differently if you cannot see the significance of that person in front of you? So when you are able to pause and have an intentional, conscious, theory-guided practice, you're able to open that patient's door. You can then seek to see who is this beautiful, spirit-filled person behind the disease, behind the diagnosis, or the, behind the behavior we may not even understand. And how do you connect with that person and create space where they can be heard? Because in this theory, we acknowledge and honor the reality that every single person in the world needs to be heard. Every single person in the world needs to be seen. Every single person in the world needs to know that they matter and what they have to say matters. And every person in the world needs to feel that they're cared and loved. loved. So this too is part of the foundation of moving from the margins to a new center to actually live out these caring moments with another human being. The last part of the theory structure has to do with the caring healing modalities that we offer to the public across time and space. This goes back to Nightingale, where she was very clear about nature and light and sound, the human voice and the way in which you touch someone, the way in which you can offer them comfort measures, relaxation, aesthetics. So these caring healing modalities allow you to not only give procedures and technology and tasks and skills, but it helps you to understand when you can be in a different way and have a different orientation toward the patient and toward your practice, you can offer these traditional tasks and skills as examples of caring healing modalities. That's one level of the caring healing modalities that you can do right now in your daily practice by just being different in terms of the way in which you're delivering the task and skills. But at another level, nursing is advancing in these very historical and current caring healing modalities such as reflexology, such as sound, such as music, such as relaxation, meditation, opportunities for healing touch, therapeutic touch. These are very energetic modalities that help to put the person back into right relation. These are consistent with Nightingale, where she advised nurses to put the patient in the best condition whereby nature can heal them. Healing is an inner model. It is not an outer treatment model alone. So in this theory, you can begin to understand that when you advance your practice through a theory lens, through a theory philosophy, through a theory ethic of how you relate to another human being, then you can begin to understand that theory can help you to advance nursing as a distinct discipline and profession in its own right. And as you do that, you're helping to change the entire culture of the hospital system and create new models and new patterns of delivery of care whereby the practices and the traditional approaches to delivery of care can indeed be repatterned by relanguaging and by refining and redesigning new ways in which you can be present in that moment and, and really interrupt that hectic pace of trying to do everything for everyone without a reflective, pausing, conscious, intentional, theory-guided practice. So I'm going to stop at this point, and hopefully you can process this and relate it to the next part of the sequence of this work as I continue with this series on the theory of human caring.